Hello friends. Now we are going to discuss our next topic related to unit number one. That is numerical method for estimation of electric field. There are several numerical methods for solving partial differential equations, Laplace and Poisson's equations that have become available. But there are different difficulties in solving these equations as for insulating materials which have a different permittivities or conductivities become stable for getting the solution. Hence, to study the high voltage apparatus and understanding of the subject that is like features can be designed properly only when, when we have a understanding of the electric field distribution. A physical system with some symmetry is possible to find an analytical solution. However, in many cases, the physical systems are very complex and therefore, in such cases, numerical methods are employed for the calculation of electric field. There are three methods which are generally used in high voltage engineering applications. First one is finite element method, charge simulation method, surface charge simulation method or boundary element method. The first method is classified as a domain method. That is finite element method is a domain method, whereas charge simulation method and surface charge simulation method is called the boundary methods. So let us begin with a discussion with first method called finite element method. This method is widely used in numerical solution of electric field problems and become very popular. In contrast to other numerical methods, finite element method is a general method and therefore is versatile tool for solving wide range of electric field problems. The finite element analysis of any problem involves basically the four different steps and the step starts from this point. So let us begin with the steps for finite element method. The first step is called finite element discretization. To start with, the whole problem domain is fictitious, fictitiously divided into small areas or volumes called as elements. Those elements are numbered as circular one. Means the numbers which are circled like one, two, three, and four with the element numbers. The potential which is unknown throughout the problem domain is approximated in each of these elements in terms of the potential at their vertices. That is called as node. So you can see the node numbers are without circle as one, two, three. That is at the vertices, those numbers, numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These are called as nodes. As a result of this, so that potential function is unknown only at the nodes. Generally, a certain class of polynomials is used for the interpolation of the potential inside each element in terms of their nodal values. The values basically which are there, that is say node 1, 2, 3, the values of those node voltages basically gives us the coefficients of interpolation function in terms of the unknown nodal potential. So 
as a result of this the interpolation can be directly carried out in terms of the nodal values the associated algebraic functions are called the shape functions the elements derive their name through their shape that is bar element in one dimension triangular and quadrilateral element in two dimension tetrahedron and hexahedron elements in three dimensional problems so this is our first where we have to divide the dimensions now let us begin with the second here the equation starts where we have to form the equations and therefore it is called as a governing equations the potential ve that is within an element is first approximated so that ve potential is element potential and then interrelated to the potential distributions in various elements such that the potential is continuous across inter element boundaries so therefore you can see that boundary which is given here there are two boundaries this is called as appropriate boundary and this one is the actual boundary so therefore the approximate solution for the whole region then becomes v x y that is there are two coordinates x and y so potential x and y is equal to summation e is equal to 1 to n potential of element for the coordinates x and y where n be the number of elements into which the solution region is divided what are those n elements elements are numbered in circles like here in this case it is numbered up to 4 starts from 1 so 1 to 4 be the element numbers so those numbers are indicated as n number that is number of elements capital n be the number of elements the most common form of approximation for the voltage v with thin an element is polynomial and that is approximated as ve so this particular potential can be written as ve of x and y coordinate a constant a b and c with the variables x and y gives me a plus bx plus c y for triangular element and for the quadrilateral element means this is for triangular element for the quadrilateral element the equation becomes as quadrilateral has four sides so therefore the equation can be written as ve x y is equal to a plus bx plus cy plus dxy so let us say this is my equation number 1 equation number 2 equation number 3 the potential ve in general is not zero so here we can say that this potential ve is not equal to zero but it is zero or we can say that that is zero outside the element so within element it is not zero it is not zero within the element but outside that element it is equal to zero outside that element is equal to zero so in view of the fact that the quadrilateral elements are non conforming elements and this particular figure is shown in previous slide now consider a typical triangular element so let us consider a typical triangular element the potentials ve1 with coordinates x1 y1 
VE2 with coordinates x2, y2, VE3 with coordinates x3, y3. The potentials V1, V2, V3 at nodes 1, 2 and 3 that can be obtained from equation 2 of previous slide. So therefore, this can be written as in matrix form VE1 VE2, VE3. Is equal to. In matrix it becomes. 1, X1, Y1. 1, X2, Y2. And 1, X3, Y3. With the constants. Which are written. Will be same. A, B and. C. So this is say equation number four. The coefficients A, B, C are determined by taking the inverse of this. So A, B, C can be written as equal to 1, 1, 1, X1, X2, X3 y1, y2, y3 inwards into ve1, ve2, ve3. Let us say this is equation 5. Now substituting the equation number 3 we get. So equation number 3 is related to the quadrilateral element which is shown in the figure. So, VE can be uh, written as 1 x y into 1 upon twice a and this can be uh, written in terms of the other elements. So, therefore, the matrix changes as x2 y3 minus x3 y2 so this is one element x3 y1 minus x1 y3 second element x1 y2 minus x2 y1 same way the matrix can be written y2 minus y3 x3 minus x2, y3 minus y1, x1 minus x3. This is y1 minus y2. This one is x2 minus x1 into ve1, ve2, ve3. So equation number 5 can be solve to get this. So this can be approximated as VE is equal to summation E is equal to 1, 2 or here instead of taking A element I just take N I. I is equal to 1, 2 N alpha I X Y into VE I where alpha 1 is 1 by 2 a the same equation which we are considering with alpha 2 and alpha 3. So a is the area of the element e and that can be written as twice a is equal to 1 1 1 x1 x2 x3 y1 y2 y3. So this can be solved so that we can get the value for A. So the value of A is positive 
if the nodes are numbered counterclockwise, that is starting from any node, it may be noted that the previous equation, that is this equation, let us say equation number six, gives the potential at any point x1 within the element provided that the potentials at the vertices are no. These are called the element shape. They have certain properties related to the alpha, where alpha may be one, when i and j both are same, alpha may be zero, when i and j both are not same. Now, the energy per unit length associated with the element can be given or written in terms of W E. So W E is equal to half of the energy epsilon the element voltage transposed into C of element into element voltage. T e denotes the transpose of the matrix. The matrix given above is normally called as element coefficient matrix. So C can be written as the element coefficient matrix. So this is our second step, that is step number B. Now step number C called as assembling of all elements. It means we have to collect all the elements Having considered a typical element, the next stage is to assemble all such elements in the solution region. The energy associated with all the elements will then be WE. As now all the elements are collecting, so therefore it is WE, E equal to 1 to N, WE that is equal to half of epsilon V transpose. Now all the elements are collected. So therefore V transpose C into V, where V be the equal to V1, V2, and so on up to Vn. And small n be the number of nodes and capital N with the number of elements. C is called as global coefficients or global coefficient matrix. That is the sum of the individual coefficient matrices. So this is step number C. Now, last step, that is step number D, solving the resulting equations. It can be shown that the Laplace and Poisson's equation is satisfied when the total energy in the solution region is minimum. Thus, we require that the partial derivatives of W, that is energy, which is represented with respect to each nodal value of the potential is zero. It means del W by del V1 is equal to zero. It is equal to del W by del V2 equal to del W by del V3 and so on. And we can approximate it as del W by del VK equal to zero if K is equal to one, two, and so on up to N. Now, if this is so, then we get energy is equal to E equal to one, two, small n v i into c i k where n with the number of nodes in the mesh and by writing 
this equation for all the nodes starting from k equal to 1 to n, we obtain a set of simultaneous equations from which the solution for v1, v2 up to vn can be formed. So this can be done either by using iteration method or band matrix method. So this is called as first method that is FEM, finite element method. Now let us start understanding the second method after finite element method and the method is called charge simulation method as mentioned in previous slide. So this charge simulation method, it belongs to the family of integral methods for the calculation of electric fields. There are two variations of this method. One is called as a discrete charges. Another is called as area charges. Discrete charges is based on the principle that the real surface charges on the surface of electrodes. So whenever we have electrode, the surface charges on the electrode, let us consider this as the surface charge on the electrode or dielectric interfaces. So this is electrode or conductor. Same way, if this conductor is insulated with some material, if that conductor is insulated with some material, then we call it as insulator or dielectric. The opposite to electric current, that is dielectric. So this insulator, again having some charges accumulation on the surface, of the dielectric. Here I am showing three charges. In this figure, it is shown by one figure. So there may be the number of charge accumulation on say electrode or conductor and as well on insulator and dielectric. So are these charges are replaced by some system of point. Means those charges can be represented with system of points. So we have to represent it with the point just a point okay and line charges located outside the field domain generally light charges line charges are represented outside the field domain now the position and the type of simulation charges are to be determined first that we have to find first and then the magnitude of the charges are calculated so that their combined effect satisfies the boundary conditions so after determining these magnitudes by method of solving system of linear equations that is to be verified and the system of simulation charges that fulfills the boundary conditions between location point with surface accuracy so that the voltage and field strength at any point within the field domain can be calculated and uh, analytically that is by using superposition of simple potential and gradient functions. So now let us start with the understanding of this method. The first point which we are considering like previous method where there are four steps. Here we are considering three steps. Basic principle of the charge simulation method. As I already said in this diagram drawn by pen that shows when a conductor is excited by voltage, like if a conductor, there is a conductor. And when the voltage is given to it, that may be electrode also. So when this conductor or electrode is connected to some voltage, the charges appear on the surface of the conductor. So these are nothing but the charges. Similar way, or we can say that these charges produce an electric field. So voltage application on the conductor develops the charges and that charges basically develops the electric field outside that 
conductor while at the same time maintains the conductor at equipotential equipotential means the voltage is same similarly when a dielectric so this is all about conductor or electric electro when a dielectric so dielectric means the insulator the insulating material may be cable insulators or any insulating material when this insulator or dielectric is excited by some external field it's it gets polarized that is the charged particles of the molecules of the dielectric get shifted from their neutral state to produce volume of dipole in essence it is possible to replace this volume of polarization by the charged surface so therefore we call it as a charge simulation method that is the simulation of the charges on the insulating material now this employs the physical description that that attempts to simulate the above mentioned continuous charge distribution by a set of discrete charges kept just outside the computational domain now these discrete charges evaluated by forcing some voltage at selected points called the contour points now these contour points on the electrode having the potential resulting from the superposition of the charges is equal to the electrode potential let the electrode potential be phi i which is given by j equal to 1 to n pij into q j where pij is potential coefficients which can be evaluated analytically for many types of charges by solving again a laplace or poisson's equation so to understand this consider a figure which is given here that shows there are three point charges as mentioned q1 q2 and q3 that is in free space the potential phi i at point c i common point will be phi i is equal to q1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r1 plus q2 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r2 plus q3 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 r3 and that is equal to pi1 q1 plus pi2 q2 plus pi3 q3 that is what the potential which we get so once the types of charges and their locations are defined these are nothing but the locations of the charges which we are considering now it is possible to relate phi i j and q j quantitatively at any boundary point in this charge simulation method the simulation charges are placed outside the space where the field solution is desired if the boundary point ci is located on the surface like here it is located on the surface of a conductor then phi i at this point contour point will be equal to the conductor potential phi so when this procedure is applied to m contour points like if there are like here we consider q1 q2 q3 up to q n means if there are n points or we can say that n unknown charges and m contour points then we get pi1 or rather p11 p12 p1n same way p21 p22 p2n and so on up to pm1 up to pmn the charges for n points as q1 q2 up to qn so we have pi1 q1 plus pi2 q2 plus pi3 q3 that is applicable only for three points here we are considering m points with the n charges 
and that the put therefore the potential becomes equal to this pi one phi two up to phi m. So this is our first basic principle of CSM. Now, if if this CSM for single dielectric medium is applied, then the equation which we have written can be considered as p n n q n is equal to phi n. So if there are n conductors with unknown potentials in a single dielectric medium, then for calculation of field, the actual charges on the surfaces of these conductors are replaced by NC, that is fictitious charge, that is placed inside or outside the conductor. NC or in other words, we can say that we are getting, you know, considering the single dielectric medium for which this particular potential is applicable. Now, if there are multi dielectric mediums present, then the field computations for multi dielectric system is more complicated than single dielectric system. Because in multi dielectric systems, the charges are scattered. This is due to the fact that under the influence of applied voltage, the dipoles are realigned in a dielectric. And this realignment has the effect of producing a net surface charge on the dielectric. Thus, in addition to addition to electrodes, each dielectric interface, that is, each dielectric dielectric interface needs to be simulated by the discrete charges. In this case, we are considering the simulation of this multi-dielectric, the boundary, where the charges. One, two, three are used to simulate the electrode while charges four, two, seven are used to simulate the dielectric boundary. The contour points one, two, three are indicated by these numbers and are selected on the electrode surface. So this is your electrode. or we can see that electrode surface. Whereas only two contour points, that is four and five, are selected on the dielectric medium. So we have electrode and on which we have a dielectric. In order to determine the simulation charges, a system of equations is formulated by imposing the boundary conditions. Now, in formulating the equations at a given contour point, the charges which lie in the same dielectric as the contour point are ignored. For example, the potential at control point one is calculated by superposition the charges from one to five. Similarly, the potential or field intensity at contour point Phi when viewed from the side of the dielectric A will be due to the superposition of the charges 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. That is 1, 2, 3, and 6, and 7. Thus, when the first boundary condition is applied to contour points 1, 2, 3, the equations that can be obtained. Summation j1, j equal to 1 to n, pij qj equal to phi c, that is i equal to 1. And j equal to 1 to 3, pij qj plus j equal to 6 to 7, pij qj equal to phi c when i is 2 and 3. When the second boundary condition is applied for the potential and the flux density at i equal to 4 to Five, the following equations are obtained. That is j equal to 4 to 5 pi j q j plus j equal to 6 to 7 summation of this pi j q j equal to 0. For i equal to 4 and 5 where f i j which is given in this particular equation 
it is epsilon a minus epsilon b is equal to same then epsilon a minus epsilon b that is also equal to zero so f i j are the field coefficients in a direction which is normal to the dielectric boundary at the respective contour point these above equations are solved to determine the unknown charges and the accuracy of simulation of multi dielectric boundaries deteriorates when the dielectric boundary has a complex profile but there is error with this csm and that depends upon the type number as well as the locations of the simulation charges the locations of contour points and the complexities of the profile of the electrodes and the dielectrics so that's all with this second method that is called csm as charge simulation method that is simulation of the charges on the electrode as well as on on the dielectric hope you understood this second method so now let us understand our third method that is boundary element method this is the last method though the charge simulation method that is csm method number 2 is known for its accuracy and speed it is not very efficient in case of multi dielectric problems so when there are multi dielectrics available in the power apparatus then it becomes difficult to do the study of the electric field at the same time it is also not efficient with very thin electrodes which are often used to control and get the electric field strength in condenser bushings transformers etc so such problems can be solved by using the surface charge simulation method so the first method was charge simulation method and this one is surface charge simulation method it is also called as a boundary element method in many cases electrodes and insulators used in high voltage equipment consist of cylinders spheres cones and plane electrodes therefore it is necessary to consider elements having these shapes these are the shapes of the electrodes or insulators so therefore it is necessary to consider the elements having these shapes to achieve a realistic field simulation by using variable charge distribution on these surfaces the elements are combined in computer code but that is by using some coding and used for the calculation of complex geometries wherever possible curved triangles are employed only at those points where the above element cannot be used this method requires a large number of elements which is normally more than 2000 independent of the surface shape and therefore leads to very large number of system equations let us begin with the principle of this method boundary element method it is very similar to the charge simulation method and therefore it is called as surface charge simulation method that is with area elements in beam like a csm beam also uses area charge elements to replace the real charges however beam doesn't require that the system component should have axial symmetry it should not be in a particular axis to be present so instead of considering real charges and instead of having this axial symmetry like on same axis that beam is used the discretization of the real charges is generally carried out by boundary elements having three or four nodes like the nodes are already defined in the previous slides which use linear shape functions to approximate the internal charge distribution if the outer surface geometry is not covered 
then suitable intermediate points can be added boundary elements having predetermined shape like cylinders cones spheres toroids which are available which are mentioned earlier so the evaluation of the resulting potential function of the boundary elements is done by numerical integration there are certain basic formulation which is done for the method the boundary element formulation calls for the scalar electric potential that is due to the surface charge density and therefore this is also called as the surface charge simulation method that can be written with the formula which is given here as phi epsilon equal to 1 by 2 alpha pi epsilon 0 integration for y rho x x pi l epsilon x that is the voltage components as epsilon and x dpx where phi l that indicates or denotes the fundamental solution the basic solution of the potential problem fundamental solution to the potential problem well we can say alpha is equal to 1 to 1 or 2 for two or three dimensional problems respective rho s denotes the surface charge density so this is the basic equation for the source formulation of the bin this can be solved by standard point allocation procedure for a discretized image charge that lies within the conducted boundaries the electric field that can be given after solving by using this equation so the resulting system of equations obtained using the source formulation will again by again be asymmetric by solving this system of equations the unknown values of the charge density can be found once the charge distribution is known potential and electric field values can be calculated throughout the domain by using above two equations so this is what the last method which we understood so therefore this complete numerical method which are classified for understanding of electric field computation as three the first method is finite element method second charge simulation method third surface charge simulation or boundary element method hope you guys understood all these methods the formulations which are given here are the direct formulae which are studied and accordingly considered for the explanation purpose there is no specific derivation required for these formulae this is for your understanding purpose so hope you understood this lecture thank you so much take care